All right, guys, we are back. I've got the approval to do more videos, so we'll keep doing these videos all the way up until the AP test in May or until we get to World War I. Uh, now, I'm not going to waste any time, so let's get into it. Today, we're going to be talking about the origins of the Industrial Revolution. Now, make no mistake, we just talked about a bunch of political revolutions. We talked about the American Revolution, the Haitian Revolution, and probably more importantly, the French Revolution. And they dramatically changed things in Europe and the United States and everywhere else in the world. But it's the Industrial Revolution that will have just as much impact as those revolutions that were political in nature. Now, when we think of Industrial Revolution, your mind is probably going to drift to the use of machines, uh, the reorganization of labor, like factories. And you're absolutely right. We just need to build on that knowledge, okay? So, I guess first and foremost, the big thing you need to know is the Industrial Revolution starts in the late 18th century. It starts in England, and the first... Uh, industry to industrialize is going to be the textile industry. Now, before you even Google it, textile just means cloth, and really specifically we're talking about cotton. Okay, so if you know those three things, you're off to a really good start. Let's talk about some other things, okay? Now, the Industrial Revolution was really founded on three innovations, okay? So you have three things that make this shift possible. One is you have a new energy source, okay? You have a new means of creating and harnessing and manipulating energy, okay? And the big fossil fuel that is going to be used in the late 18th and throughout the 19th century is going to be coal, all right? That's going to be the big one. Now, look, later on, we'll get, you know, we'll get in petroleum, we'll get into gasoline, but right now it is going to be coal, and that is what's going to fuel the machines. It's gonna what it's gonna it's what makes them go. Second big innovation is we're gonna have new machines. I mean, you could probably read it down here, you know. But we'll have like you know the cotton gin and the, you know the rotary engine and the spinning jenny. We'll have all these new machines that help make things. Okay. And then the third most important thing is that we are going to reorganize how we use labor. We are going to shift from what's called a cottage industry or a putting out system to a factory system. And we'll go more in detail a little bit later on in the lecture with those things, okay? Also, nations that industrialize first, I'm looking at you, England, Nations that industrialize first, they are going to have an overwhelming advantage in, in the world. They are going to be the ones that dominate the world because with industrialization, they are able to accumulate the most wealth. Okay, so that's very important to know. Um, also, the Industrial Revolution truly creates a global market. Okay, everywhere in the world, you will be using products to make something, you will be distributing products to different people, you will create a truly global market through industrialization. Okay, now let's give some context here. Before we have industrialization, before we have the machines, before we have people going to the factories, in England a couple things needed to happen first, and we've talked about this, okay? First is what you need is that in the late 18th century you had probably mid-18th century, you had the agricultural revolution. Now, we talked about this. With the agricultural revolution in England, it was making food, more food, with less people. All right? You know, we talked about, you know, the use of nitrogen-bearing crops overwhelmingly. We talked about new fertilizers. We talked about the enclosure movement, where we're shutting off smaller farms or common areas where people farm and, and creating more commercial style farms. Regardless of what happens, with the enclosure movement, with the agricultural revolution, you are making more food with less people. And that's gonna be very, very important for the industrial revolution because that gives you the labor source. You have all these people that are out of a job 
and they're just going to the cities going, I need some work, man. Well, luckily, they're in a situation where there is a need for labor. Yes, come and work in the factories. So arguably without the agricultural revolution, we wouldn't have had the industrial revolution as well. Also, something very important, England, although I'm not saying that they weren't divided by class, because in England they were definitely divided by class, but there were some groups in England that was not the aristocracy that had power. In England, you had you know, landed gentry, you had merchants that had wealth, that had power. And those guys are much more willing to take a chance to make some money. We're going to see that on the continent of Europe, there was definitely more of a trend of a collective mentality. Okay, I, I don't want to risk a lot, so I don't lose a lot. And in England, you had the high rollers, man. They're coming in saying... I'm an entrepreneur, I want to make tons of money, let's make it happen. And a lot of them are going to make a ton of money. Now, of course, you know, we haven't really learned about capitalism yet, but if you're going to make a lot of money, there's a good chance you might lose a lot of money too. But in England, you had a lot of entrepreneurs that were ready to kind of risk it all to make it big, okay? Now, um, a lot of these merchants too, keep in mind, or these gentry, they're making their money from overseas plantation. Okay. Um, also, something that else that helped out England in terms of creating the Industrial Revolution. Um, they're scientists in England. Much more, they're studying things that are much more practical. You know, we talked about this in previous chapters. You know, we talked about the botany and stuff like that, where they're doing things to practically make more money. It's not necessarily theoretical. Okay. Now, also, too, one last thing before we kind of get into the nitty-gritty of this. England is sitting on the right resources at the right time, okay? You know, and, and really, that's kind of the story through history. If you want to do something great, like, you have to have the right resource at the right time and have access to it. Well, England has the right resource at the right time, and they're able to exploit it. They sit on two very, very important resources. They sit on coal and they sit on iron ore, okay? And there's massive quantities of that, and that's really the two big things you need for the Industrial Revolution to happen, okay? Also, keep in mind, England, even before the, the early 19th century, late 18th century, they were already amassing a giant empire throughout the world, okay? So they had all of these... Um, colonies. They had all of these territories, and that helps them build wealth. It helps them to distribute finished goods. So England, through the industrial process, would make a product. Then, because they had colonies throughout the world, they were able to ship it everywhere and make money. Also, they had um, a, a, a huge access to raw materials from everywhere. So England is already suited to make the move. Um, another thing with England is that they do have strong financial institutions. You know, by the 19th century, the center of European finance has shifted from um, Amsterdam to London. Okay, so you have the, you know, you have the, the Amsterdam, um, I'm sorry, you have the London Stock Exchange. You have banks in England that are willing to lend you money to buy a boat or to start a business, okay? And that just helps the English economy. It just further and further and further increases, you know, trade, industrialization, selling, okay? Which is also very important, okay? Now, going to the Industrial Revolution, and going back to what I first said about the new form of energy, okay? Obviously, it's going to be coal. Now, coal is it, it's not new, all right? Like, it's not like, oh, it's the 19th century, we discovered coal. Okay? However, they do find a way to process better coal. And I have it up here somewhere. It, it's called coke or a cork. Okay? It, it's a faster, hotter burning um, fossil fuel. Okay? So, with cork, uh, uh, cork or coke, you are actually able to 
get the fire hotter longer and that produces better iron when you start the smelting process okay so here we're going to see that they find a better way to make stronger iron which is very important because everything in the 19th century up until up until we create the Bessemer process is going to be made out of iron okay now second thing James Watt super super important guy James Watt in 1764 is going to create the rotary engine okay you know just think about it as an engine with with that pumping arm and that arm can move something now it can move a variety of different things it can it can move a saw through a mill it, it can move a, a needle you know with thread and, and make stuff it, it can move a wheel to create a locomotive or a steamship okay but now you have an engine that can make that can, that can make an action that can make something move now you actually had this before but you'd always have to put your mills next to the stream and the water current would push the wheel and that would make something go. Now with the steam engine that is run on coal, you can put a factory pretty much anywhere you want. Now, if you use your brain, you're gonna understand that most of the factories at this point, they're gonna be developed right near the coal mines, okay? Um, another thing we need to look at, uh, Adam Smith, Wealth of Nations. We've talked about wealth of nations before. You know, we talked about some of the enlightened philosophers, okay? So with Adam Smith and wealth of nations, you know, he talks about a ton. He's like, hey, this is the creation of capitalism. But in terms of the Industrial Revolution, he talked about the vision of labor, okay? He talked about that don't just have one person do all the processes. If you want to be more efficient, you need to have the process broken down into small steps and have one person just do one step over and over and over and over again. And this would create efficiency. It would create uniformity, okay? Now, we're gonna come back to that when we start talking about the, the putting out system and the cottage system as well. Um, I, I guess just as an example, I do have Josiah Wedgwood in there. Um, Josiah Wedgwood, he he really one of the first guys to put the vision of labor into practice. You know, pr you know, right now it's kind of theoretical, but he puts it into practice, and he divided up his labor and he made plates, ceramic plates. He divided up his labor into small specialized tasks. Okay, now this became very very important because. With the plates, he started to get a very uniform plate, which was easier to stack, which was therefore easier to ship all around the world. And of course, Josiah Wedgwood made tons and tons and tons of money. Okay. All right. Now, last thing I think I'm going to talk about in this video before I have to change it to part two is we need to talk about how, or I, I should say the first industry to really industrialize, and that is going to be textiles, okay? For England, they are going to be insanely wealthy and insanely rich through the making of textiles. And, and textiles means cloth, and I'm specifically talking about cotton. Now we've talked about this over and over again, why cotton is so desired. You know, it's been desired for a long time, but especially by the 18th and 19th centuries. Look, it, it's light, it's breathable, it's easily washed, it, it's durable. And so it was very, very much valued in England. Now, prior to the late, you know, 18th century, most Englishmen, they got their cotton from India. Cotton was always known as an Indian export, you know, calico cloth. So they got all their cotton from India. Well, of course, we've already talked about this. England is making more and more inroads into India. England has having more and more control over India. So of course, they're gonna start controlling the cotton cloth, okay? Now I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna see you for part two in a second.